All right, students, today we're going to talk about transform plate boundaries. Now, students, if you look at this particular image on your screen, we can actually see two pieces of crust or pleats, all right, one on this side, left-hand side, and one on the right-hand side. They can basically be moving in opposite directions. These plates are not converging. That means they are not moving towards each other. They are not moving away from each other. That means they are not diverging. What is happening here is that they are simply sliding past each other. All right. Transform plate boundaries are also known as neutral or conservative plate boundaries. Why? There is no subduction taking place. That means no plate is going below the other. There is no divergence taking place. That means they are not moving away from each other. But what they are simply doing, they are simply sliding past each other. Now, students, this diagram on the screen is actually showing both plates are they can actually be moving in uh, in different directions, right? Or they can, in reality, sometimes they can actually move in the same direction, except one plate is in fact moving faster than the other. All right, I will show you that just now. Um, just highlighting something very important here. This asthenosphere, this big word here, asthenosphere, is technically the upper part of the mantle or where the molten materials exist, uh, where the magma comes from. That is basically the upper part of the mantle, per se. This little sphere is actually solid rock, which is part of the crust. All right, so this is the crust on the surface, which is moving, sliding past each other. All right, and the asthenosphere is at the bottom. Now, students, Bear in mind that uh, when at the transform plate boundaries, there is no subduction, there is no convergence, um, and also there is no divergence. What does that mean? There is no molten materials coming up on the surface. All right. That means the actual plate is just subjected to movement, but we don't have any volcanic activity. We do not have any volcanic island arcs. So transform plate boundaries are not associated with volcanoes, all right? And they are also not associated with volcanic island arcs. But what is created here? If these two plates are actually tearing away from each other, this created here is a gap which is created here, right? Which is a slight. It is not as deep as for that of divergence, but it is just a tear on the surface of the earth. All right? Plus that tear or that weakness, or that breakage, that line of weakness is what you call a fault. So the main feature associated with uh, transform plate boundaries, all right, are in fact faults. Okay. All right. Let, me, let us talk about some examples of transform plate boundaries. All right. This here we know fully well. This is the entire North American plate, and this ocean here is the Pacific Ocean. All right. Now, students, based on the image, you would have seen arrows moving in different directions, but sometimes the plates can actually be moving in the same direction. What happens out here, this North American plate is actually moving northwesterly, and this Pacific plate is also moving northwesterly. However, the North American plate is actually moving faster than, this, than the Pacific plate. So it will actually give the appearance that... They are moving in opposite direction when in reality, this example of North American plate versus the Pacific plate at a transform plate boundary, which is right here, all right, they are in fact both moving in the same direction, which is northwesterly. All right. However, this plate is moving faster, which exhibits that level of tear on the surface of the earth. All right. Now, class, we would have mentioned that. Uh, a particular type of fault, and the San Andreas fault is, in fact, the most distinctive fault in the world. All right? That is situated in California, which is right there. All right? San Andreas fault right in California, this big stretch. This actual fault is approximately 1,600 kilometers in terms of length. That is actually relatively large. All right? Um, there's a movie which is based upon the San Andreas Fault. It's actually called San Andreas. It's not a bad movie. It's actually a relatively good movie. A little exaggerated, though, but um, it actually gives us some understanding of this particular fault. 
Okay. All right, this is actually, as you can see, there's a, a big line, all right, which is a line of weakness because if you place simply sliding past each other, all right, um, this line of weakness is in Fagi San Andreas Ford, which extends from the, uh, the western end of North America and along the California um, section, all right. And that is actually unique because both plates are, in fact, at a transform plate boundary. All right. Now, class, why are they considered to be neutral or conservative? Is because of the fact that there is no divergence and there is no construction, no convergence. Convergence are associated with destruction, whereas divergence is associated with construction. At a transform plate boundary, the, technically there is really no construction or development, or there is actually no destruction per se. All right. And that is actually unique. Although, yes, we have a breakage or a, a line of weakness, yes, there is no major destruction of crust. All right. All right. So what we are looking at here is, in fact, uh, an aerial view. Now, students, an aerial view is, in fact, a view from above, right, from the air, right, that you may actually take with a helicopter or whatever the case may be. Now, the thing about it is that this is actually showing the, the tear, all right, on the surface of the land. This way San Andreas fault actually looks like from above. It's actually relatively broad and also a very long, sorry, a relatively long area. Look at the distance actually somewhere it extends. All right. Now this is a very large structure, all right, which is typically associated with um, any type of neutral or conservative plate boundary and is actually the largest fault on earth that we know so far that is. All right. All right, so this image actually is what we shared in the classroom, and it basically shows um, another ex or two other examples of um, transform plate boundaries. Apart from North America and um, the Pacific plates, we also have the North American plate, which is at the upper region, the upper region here, interacting with the Caribbean plate. The Caribbean plate is actually moving uh, in an easterly direction, whereas the North American plate is actually moving in a west westerly direction. All right. The South American plate and the Caribbean plate also forms a transform plate boundary where, just as indicated earlier, the Caribbean plate is moving easterly and the South American plate, similar to the North American plate, is in fact moving to the west. All right, so these are nice examples on what we have here, Percy. All right, so I want you to remember, remember this is actually is in, is in, in fact in your notes. I want to remember these notes properly for me, revise it thoroughly and all these things. Um, the diagram on the videos and what another simply to assist. All right, so keep that in mind for me, please. All right, students. Hope it was actually, I hope it was actually inform um, informative. Uh, feel free to question if you need anything. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Bye.